All right, you want to know something? You want to know something amazing? This is, we're filming this before we leave to go to the airport to go to Paris. So we're in between stuff right now. Well, we're not going to show it until I'm probably out there already. I don't even know. Things are so crazy right now that uh, it's just, it's amazing we're doing this at all in between. Yeah, we've been home for like a day and that's it. But we, you know, we're, we're here. We're, we're doing it. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And in today's video, we're going to show you how you can do custom uh, grouping for Intune devices based on, I mean, actually anything you want by using Entra ID extension attributes. So it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a deep dive today. Well, eventually we'll be back on a normal schedule and uh, things won't be so crazy, but uh, I don't know when that's going to be. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. All right, so it's been a while since we've done this, but let's go to the whiteboard. All right, so we've all been there when it comes to dynamic groups, right? There's not enough attributes you can choose from. You want to do something more specific. Maybe you're trying to emulate something closer to when we had like, you know, uh, collections in the SCCM days or, or some kind of smart group. Unfortunately, this is something we just can't do natively in Intune, right? It doesn't seem to be coming. I mean, maybe eventually with all this device query stuff, right? Depending on what they let us do, but it's still a while's out. But here's the good news. You could pretty much do anything if you know how to use PowerShell and the Microsoft Graph. So uh, let me walk you through the flow of what I'm thinking here. All right, we're going to keep the concepts pretty basic. Let's say you want to check your managed PCs to see if Firefox is installed. Ultimately, you want a dynamic group that consists of only PCs with Firefox installed. So how are we going to do this? So here's what I'm thinking. From Intune, we deploy a remediation script. And that remediation script will ultimately take care of that question for us of whether or not it's installed. If it is installed, we'll make a post call to the graph and ultimately add our own value to extension attribute seven or 14 or eight or whatever number you wanna use and we'll write Firefox. Our dynamic group will look for devices that have an extension attribute seven or whatever number we choose that equals Firefox and boom. Now using Intune, we put together a dynamic group of all devices that have a certain app installed. I'm using this example just so we have something tangible we can put together and follow and, and you know make a script for and a whole method in this video, right? Clearly, maybe you don't care about Firefox and that's fine. You can follow the method we're using to put anything you want in there. It could be an app, a policy, uh, you know, maybe even uh, certain users who are cached on the machine. You can use the same thing I'm about to show you so you can customize any dynamic group to be exactly what you're looking for. So first things first, we need a remediation script. Well, remediation and detection. I'm going to make a new folder. Uh, let's call it dynamic Firefox remediation. And we're going to have two scripts in here. Detect dot PS one and remediate dot PS one. All right, let's open this in code. So let me lay it out what we're going to do. Um, we're going to check for Firefox. Obviously that's the whole point of this. Um, and what we'll do just to be safe is we'll look in the 32 and 64 bit registry. Um, we're ultimately going to use the uninstall paths to check to see if it's there. Okay. We're going to check for Firefox in the 64 bit registry, and then we're going to remediate if found. So this is a very simple script, right? So first thing is we'll check those registry paths. So let's declare those. Um, I'm just going to do, let's see. It'll be an array of HKLM software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, uninstall. And we're going to look through the whole thing. And to also grab that 64-bit path, software, while 6432 node, I meant 32, I said 64. You know what I meant. You know me well enough by now. Okay, those are our, it's our array of paths. We're gonna make a variable called Firefox installed and we're gonna start it as false um, until we find it. Okay, so we're gonna iterate through the registry. So for each path in registry paths 
Yep. Uh, we'll say apps is equal to get item property path error action uh, silently continue where object where the object display name is like and then we'll say Firefox and we'll leave wildcards on both ends just just in case right okay so it's looking for anything that's Firefox if something is found so if apps we're going to change Firefox installed to true and then we'll break out of the for each yep now we'll just check it so remediate if found right so we'll say if Firefox installed so if it's true we're going to exit one to trigger the remediation else we will exit zero and do nothing because it's not there there's nothing to do uh you could even write a little here right output firefox is installed and here we can say firefox is not installed just in case you want to have something to read so now we will remediate so few things we're going to need on the remediation if found so we're going to need graph credentials right we're going to have to authenticate uh so we'll say authenticate with graph so in advance you're going to need some kind of permissions in order to run this so so let's head over to our entry portal and go to our applications and our app registrations so let's make a new registration and we're going to call it dynamic attribute group and let's grab the client id so just like we've done before is we're going to need the client id in secret so the client id is that okay as far as the secret first we're going to do the permissions so we're going to add a permission uh graph application permissions so let's do device device read write all that should be more than enough for what we need i'm going to grant consent perfect and now let's add a secret i'm going to leave the recommendation and i'm going to grab the value remember just like always this is the only time you can grab the value uh we'll say client secret And remember, you want the secret value, not the secret ID. That won't, that won't help you there. All right. And we will also need the tenant ID. And that's very easy to find. Just go to overview when you're logged in and grab the tenant ID. Cool. All right. So let's assemble the token. Assemble the token. The token URL is going to be HTTPS login.microsoftonline.com slash tenant ID slash OAuth to V2.0 token. The token body is client id client id scope https graph.microsoft.com slash dot default client secret is equal to client secret and the grant type is going to be client credentials uh, I know there's a way we can make that look better. We can just tab things out. Yeah, you're supposed to make these things look better. Never actually done this, but I'm starting to see people do it. So we might as well look pretty like everybody else. The token response is equal to invoke rest method, method, post, URI, token URL body 
token body. And the content type is application xww form URL encoded. Okay. And then we are going to see the access token is the token response dot access token. Okay. All right. So that's our token there. Uh, so actually now we just need headers. So the headers could be uh, authorization. Authorization equals bearer access token. And the content type is equal to application JSON. Uh, I left the quotes out of authorization. There we go. That's that's going to be our that's our headers. So we'll be fine there. So now that we can authenticate to the graph, I mean, like some of this stuff is just, you know, you guys like when I type through this, you say it helps. You can always skip ahead if you just want to copy and paste this stuff. Um, if you know how to authenticate already, I mean, you know, that that's fine. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to get the device ID because remember this is running on the client that we just found Firefox on. So we're going to say the device, let's call this intra device ID equals. So if we go back uh, to my migration solution, I know it's like, what are we doing here? Right? Um, we actually get the device ID locally. So here into enter device ID. Okay. So we have a way to get the object ID. Let's take that and let's build that right in here. Okay. So that'll get the device ID and then we can run that against the enter ID and we're good to go. So let's just put that in here. Get enter ID. Intra device ID. Now that we have the intra device ID, what we can do is we can assemble our body. So actually what's going to be smart for the body is, um, to just do it like this string here. So it'll be extension attributes, just like we typed before. Extension attribute seven. Firefox. All right. So that's our JSON body. This way we don't have to convert it. That's exactly as it needs to be written for us to uh, patch that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the patch request. So make patch request. So we'll say invoke rest method. Method is patch. The URI is HTTPS graph.microsoft.com slash beta slash devices slash intra ID and the headers are the headers. Oh, come on. The body is the body. And then we can just write post, write output extension attribute seven set to Firefox for intra ID. Okay. So before we throw this together, I'm just going to create a dynamic group that can look for that. All groups. We're going to make a new group. Firefox devices, devices, devices with Firefox installed and that'll be dynamic device. Let's add the query. Extension attribute seven is equal to Firefox. Look at that. Perfect. So now all that's left to do is upload this to Intune. So we'll go to scripts and remediations, create, Say Firefox dynamic group checks device for Firefox browser 
and if found adds to dynamic group. So we'll go to desktop, dynamic Firefox remediation, detect is detection, remediate is our remediation one. And we're gonna run it as 64 bit PowerShell. Let's just do all devices. Um, that's fine. It's really a non-destructive script. So going back to the beginning, oh, let me put this to patch since I messed up. Basically when that runs, if it sees it there, it's going to make that patch call. So we should, we should see a bunch of devices start showing up if they have Firefox. Okay. So if we come here and we look at Firefox devices, uh, it definitely needs more time, but there's already a member here. So it's this guy that looks like my cloud PC. So why don't we go look that up? Um, and make sure it got the attribute. So the object ID is here. So what we can do, so let's just make a get call against that object. Do, do, do. Firefox extension attribute seven. So now what I have is a whole group where a bunch of devices that have Firefox are gonna show up here. So hopefully this gives you a method you can follow for something similar, right? It doesn't have to be Firefox. It could be anything, any property, any physical thing. You know, we looked in the registry. You can look in the file explorer, right? You can look at policies, anything you want. And if there's something there, Right now you have the freedom to make smart dynamic groups based on that. And, and you can see, depending on when you run the remediation, they're pretty quick. So this might be something you want to schedule the remediation to run every day, twice a day, once a week. It depends what it is, right? So let me know uh, what your thoughts are. If you're doing something similar, I'm going to put this all in the GitHub. So you have the example of it. The link will be below and we'll be seeing you.